taking vitamin D supplements is a huge mistake. It's a huge mistake that I've made and that a lot of people are still making. As it turns out, the chemical structure of supplement vitamin D is not equal to real vitamin D made from sunlight. Not to mention that there are a ton of other benefits that you are getting while you are in real sunlight. Now this is a shout out to all of the people in the internet pushing vitamin D supplements and being into natural medicine because you're potentially harming your people more than helping them. What's the fundamental difference between synthetic vitamin D and real vitamin D? First of all, vitamin D can be obtained via two ways in nature. The first way is the less significant one, that's food. So fish, things like salmon, have small amounts of vitamin D. However, the amounts really found in those foods will never get you to optimal amounts if this is your only source of vitamin D. Meaning you're indoors all day or all year and you're eating some fish, never gonna get you to optimal amounts and probably not even gonna get you out of the deficiency. By the way, I would consider optimal amounts over 60 nanograms per deciliter vitamin D. Now what's the second way? The second way is the more significant way, or I should say the main way for us to get vitamin D. That's really important for people to understand. It's the main way. It's not a food story, it's a light story. We make vitamin D from sunlight. So when you go out into the sun, like I am right now, you start to make, best actually if the UV index is above three, you start to make vitamin D. And you make vitamin D with the help of this UVB light that should have a frequency of around 312 nanometers. You make vitamin D from 7D hydrocholesterol. So our good old friend cholesterol that the mainstream has labeled as a toxin. Guess what? Without cholesterol, we wouldn't even be alive and we would certainly not be able to make vitamin D. Vitamin D is a little weird as you're, it's not a vitamin that you really get from food. Although I have to say most of the B vitamins can be obtained via different ways. For example, your gut microbiome can make large amounts of certain B vitamins. And you can also make B vitamins like vitamin B3 niacin from certain amino acids like tryptophan that are also essential, but it's not the only way to get them from food. Anyways, the main way for us to get vitamin D is actually from the sun and not from food. Now that's the part that you still might know, but let's go further. Your skin, when you go outside into the sunlight, your skin's first of all sulfates cholesterol. So nothing is happening, it's not directly going to vitamin D. First of all, your skin sulfates cholesterol. And then your body makes, from the sulfated cholesterol, it makes sulfated vitamin D. And on this picture, you can see its structure is different because it has sulfate in it. So what is sulfate? Sulfate is sulfur surrounded by four oxygen atoms. And our body uses this group for different things, and a lot of them actually. One of these ways is the elimination of toxins. So there are all kinds of toxins, and if they are water soluble, most likely you can get rid of them very easily. However, if they're fat soluble, your body gets some problems, and therefore it puts a sulfate group on that toxin, if it's possible, and that makes the toxin more water soluble and then you can eliminate it via the kidneys or other ways like sweating. So it makes it more water soluble and the same thing is happening with vitamin D. So if you have the supplement vitamin D, this is fat soluble mostly. Sulfate of vitamin D made from the sun is water soluble and can literally go through your bloodstream. This is actually a big thing because the more fat soluble vitamin D can't go through the bloodstream just like that. It needs a protein to carry it. And I told you that vitamin D is made from 70 hydrocholesterol, so from cholesterol. And basically 
vitamin D and cholesterol almost have the exact same structure. The only thing that UVB light really changes is a specific bond. So you basically almost have the same molecule and it uses the same transporter system inside your body. That means LDL. So the bad cholesterol. Now we could go in depth if it's really bad, but it's not a great idea to raise your LDL in that context with synthetic vitamin D. So meaning if you have high LDL and you're taking a lot of vitamin D synthetic, this might be because of the vitamin D. And especially if you don't have the correct cofactors to activate it because it's gonna be stored somewhere and transported somewhere. Meaning you need the cofactors like magnesium, etc. Now what else is different? Vitamin D sulfated made in your skin does nothing to calcium. Everyone focuses on the vitamin D to calcium relationship and it raises phosphorus here and there. No, no, no. It doesn't do anything for your bones really. And also does, it doesn't do anything for your calcium absorption. It doesn't increase your calcium absorption by 20 times. And I read about this some time ago and when I was in Turkey and I got a lot of sun exposure. I'm Fitzpatrick type 2 skin, so pretty bright, pretty pale. And I got into the sunlight there. I make a ton of vitamin D, but I never had to take any magnesium. If you just take 10,000 international units of a vitamin D supplement, you're going to notice, oh, I'm getting some cramps. I get insomnia, I can't sleep. So that's when you're going to realize, oh, I need all of these weird cofactors, so I need magnesium. Didn't need magnesium one time in that time. And I was in the sun a lot and I made a lot of vitamin D. So that tells you they are all on the wrong path. If they're on their calcium relationship, it's nothing to do with calcium. Another thing I think is a big issue is people taking vitamin D in the winter. You need to have the correct signals throughout every single day and every single season. Otherwise you increase your risk for disease and cancer because you create mismatches in your circadian rhythm. If you don't have enough vitamin D in the winter, you simply didn't make enough in the summer. Or your environment depletes you of vitamin D because your environment is so toxic. But then do something about that. The other part that you need to understand is that vitamin D is only a part of all of the sun's benefits. Only a small part. So I tell my clients all the time in my consultings, the sun is at best one sixth of the sun's benefits. You don't even know how much you don't know. And as it turns out, all of the other benefits, you can't get them from pills. You need to be outside. So what's the key takeaway? The key takeaway is that vitamin D from supplements, if you take them in doses above 800 international units per day, which would be equal, if you only take 800 international units per day, it's kind of like eating fish every single day, which would be possible. I guess you could do that, would still not do that anymore. Anyways, if you take it above that, like 5,000 international units, 10,000 international units, 20,000, 50,000, you are taking a drug. A drug that is synthetically made and that has different effects on your body than real vitamin D. Once I realized that, that shocked me because I always thought, hey, I'm just taking the supplement, <laughs> not getting skin cancer, that kind of bullshit. But that's not the truth. The truth is you're taking a drug and you didn't even know that. Now you might say, well, what if I eat salmon all day? The dosage can really make the drug. And 10,000 international units is not achievable with food. So what's the best example for something being natural and still being synthetic in my opinion? Oregano oil that people use for these antimicrobial cleansings. Yeah, it's true. Oregano oil has, is natural. But it turns out you could never get that dosage in nature. And it also turns out if you take too much of that or for a longer period of time, you get liver damage. Do you get that in nature? No, unless you do something really stupid. 
Another thing is that in those supplements is hexane because that's what they use to extract it from sheep wool. And last thing is vitamin D supplements most likely downregulate your own production. So the longer you take it now, the longer it takes to reverse that whole process because then you suddenly go outside and you can't make enough vitamin D anymore. So get your pale ass outside and I don't care what skin type you are. If you're type one, you need to be outside. If you're type six, you need to be outside. And if you're really brown, you need to be outside more if you're at a higher latitude because you make less vitamin D from the same UV index than I do. So subscribe if you want to know the truth and unsubscribe all clowns that are wasting your time.